I'm back. This is Chandler for Melda Production, and today I want to continue my physical modeling uh, video series, and I want to talk about commuted synthesis. And so you might be asking, like, what is this? And I don't want to spend too long on this, but basically what it is, is it takes the fact that you can change the order of certain things in physical modeling. For example, you might usually have an exciter like this, and then you have a resonator, like, for example, the modal filter or the resonator, etc. And after that, you can put like EQ or reverb, etc. But actually, you can put the reverb and EQ before the resonator. And normally that doesn't seem like a big deal, but where it can become useful is you can take the exciter, the EQ, reverb, etc., and put it all together into one sample. And that way you can save some processing power by not having to do the EQ work and the reverb work in real time. You can put it all together in one sample and play that instead. So I'm going to show you how you can do that and what sounds it might allow you to make. So if we start here, we should have a modal filter. It's going to sound like a, like a glockenspiel or something. Uh, and what I have for an exciter here is I just have a sine wave that's doing a sine sweep here. Move the envelope. Oh, that's already up. Good. So it's just doing a basic sine sweep. It sounds like this. So it sounds pretty good. But we can change this to something else. So you see in the sampler here, I have a few different samples. So let's say I have a glockenspiel like this. So you can see that sounds a little bit lighter and it doesn't have as much fundamental. It's a higher tone. Let's try a marimba. Xylophone. So hopefully you can hear the difference between all these. Uh, so I really like this, uh, but I'll show you how you can do it with some other things here. So actually, let me turn on the limiter for a second. Uh, go back to this and let's try it with a resonator quickly. So this is just a basic like a string sound like a guitar. Okay, and let's change it like a guitar pick sound, acoustic guitar. As opposed to the sine wave. So hopefully you can hear the difference in tone between there. Of course, these aren't perfect. You have to do more than this, and you have to spend more time adjusting the resonator and the modal filter to make sure everything else is right. And even afterwards, putting an additional filter before or after it actually makes it sound a little bit better. But for the basic tone, I think it's pretty good. So let's do an example, and let's do a acoustic bass. So I'll just set this up. I set this up beforehand. This is almost like the default setting of the resonator. I just increase the feedback here. Nothing else is really going on. And so what we're going to need to do is turn on this, the exciter, but it's not going to sound anything like an acoustic bass. It'll sound like That's really nothing like an acoustic bass. We want it to sound like something else. So we need a sample of something. So I actually have one here. I'll play this. We want it to sound like this. Okay, so make that using whatever samples you have, or if you find like a sample of something online, you can do that. And then I try to copy it here with what we have. And so it'll sound like this. In this case, I think it should be an octave down, but I already recorded this, so it doesn't matter. But when you actually do it yourself, make sure it's in the same octave, uh, so you have something that matches. I like to do this so it has the lowest note, and the highest note and make sure they're at the highest velocity because obviously if you have it at the highest velocity you should be getting all the different harmonics and things which is what you want and you can always filter those out later if you want a lighter sounding hit so what we're going to do is after you have those and you have them on your machine someplace we'll go into here don't need the analyzer but let's get out a freeform equalizer now, wherever you put it on your hard drive, find it, and we're going to use the fake one first. Just choose Analyze Audio File. Have this. This is the M Sound Factory bass. 
Now, actually, I want this as a target, so we're just going to use swap. So now it's green. And now for the red one, we're going to use the real base, like this. Now that we have these selected, there's two things we need to do. Remember to change this to minimum phase, just so we don't get any latency. And now change this range all the way up to 64. Now, what we want to do is we want to make this green sound like the red. So click this button here, equalize green to sound like red. Okay, everything's good. But for this, when you do this, one problem you might have is you look here and you see this like curve going up. This isn't good. This is probably not going to sound correct and it's probably going to be too loud. So you might want to turn the output down just in case. But whenever I see this, I know this is probably a mistake. And usually I just take this red line and just follow it down and trace it myself like this. And you might find you have to do this sometimes with the uh, low end too, but in this case it actually looks okay. But let's actually listen what it sounds like. This is actually sounding close to what I want. So this is with it, with it off. On. So that's getting pretty close. Not perfect, but it's all right. So try to get as close as you can. You can mess around with this more and adjust more things. But once you're happy with it, click Save IR. And we're just going to change this, name it something like Acoustic Bass Curve. Click OK. There we go. Now, we could just leave this on the whole time, but this is going to take a lots of CPU. So let's just turn this off. Now let's go into Cabinet. So M Cabinet. Turn this resonance off. And we're going to import that. So now you see we have this imported and it should sound the same. Okay, but it still doesn't really have like the resonance uh, of the sound of a acoustic bass. So let's add some in there. We can either use these if you want to, but I like to actually use the wideners. So we'll use one of these and just kind of scroll through these until you find something you like. This. Maybe that's okay. Yeah, let's try the second one. Try medium. The sound. I can't play bass well, uh, and I can't play keyboard. But you get the idea. So have that set up however you like it. Maybe I want to pull this back a little bit like this. Another thing I want to do is I want to change the widening. So you hear the widening. It's too wide. I don't want that. I want it to be mono like this. Now you can have it, uh, you know, in stereo if you want to, but I, I just don't like that. Uh, so whatever you want. Uh, now let's change the latency. If you have this up too high, it's going to give you like a whoosh sound. Let's see if I can demonstrate it. You that wah. Like, I don't want that. So, just turn it down a little bit, like two or three. Seems pretty sharp. And from here, we can do any additional EQ work. So, let me see if I can find something I don't like. much difference. Okay. So let's say I like that better. Now you're probably thinking, okay, so you, you just like leave this, but no, we don't want to do that either because this is also taking some CPU and we could export it, but there's actually a better way to do this than actually exporting it. What we're going to do is go in here and find recorder. Now, wherever you want to put this on your hard drive, uh, put it there. So I'll just put it here on my hard disk. Uh, let's call it um, uh, Coost Based Video, like this. Now, one thing you want to do is turn off the resonator. 
So it should just sound like this. Like that, okay? Now when you're ready, just hit record, click it once, and then when it's done, turn off record like this. Okay, so now we have everything. So from here, we can erase all this. I'll just turn it off for now, so nothing's being wasted. I'm not wasting any CPU. Now turn the resonator back on, uh, and let's look in here to find our sounds. So we have acoustic bass video, and you see here, there's a little bit of gap here. I usually like to go into an audio recording and remove this, but we can do that afterwards. I'm sure you know how to do it. So I'll play it. Ugh. This is the before with just the sine wave, no sample. And here's with our commuted synthesis. Sorry, I really wish I could play keyboard, but I think you get the idea. So this type of thing can really help you if you're trying to get a more realistic sound. And I know for me, it's like hard to get those exciter sounds. Like, how do you get those right? But this can really help. And of course, you can adjust everything in any way you want. You can do it additional EQing in M cabinet. You can add more resonators or more widening if you want a more reverb sound. You can even add an actual reverb in there and put that on there if you want uh, even longer decay on these sounds. But I hope this gave you an idea, and I hope I explained it well enough that you understand how to do it. Uh, if you have any questions, leave those down below. Give me a thumbs up if you like this, and check out all the other plugins at MeldaProduction.com. Until next time, see you.